I think. Hello, welcome Hi. to our subjective uh, introduction to Central Europe. Uh, <laughs> I am Julia Voronovic. Yeah, I'm Maria Lukacova. Yeah. Yeah. Poland, <laughs> Warsaw. Yeah, and Aleppo and Prague and the Czech Republic. So. Uh, why this topic, you may ask, you know? Why is it, why is it different than just the Central Eastern Europe or West Europe? Well, that's the thing. It's in between. And, uh, yeah, when we were talking about it, uh, Julia comes with a super, super nice idea <laughs> and sentence maybe, or maybe just questions, you know, that uh, are you afraid? of the East, are tired of the West. <laughs> yeah, that, like that we have this thing in between, that it's not the West and it's not the East, it's just Central mm -hmm. Europe, which, you, you know, you, we, we could talk a, a lot about history, about this, that, like, you know, that it started with the, like, feudalism, other, you know, other, like, aristocratic uh, power mm -hmm. in the 16th century, blah, blah, blah. But is it worth it? Is it really interesting to talk about it? I don't think so. We, can all, we could also talk about uh, the Visegrad group, which is like the Central Europe in the, in the most uh, um, compressed way. So it's the Czech Republic, it's Slovakia, uh, it's Hungary, and it's Poland. It's the fourth, it's like a V4 called <laughs> sometimes on some, uh, on some magazines, uh, four of countries who met after the communists broke down to talk about the future, to maybe to join the European Union, like they they are, they they they, are, they were called Visegrad group just the same as three kings in 14th century that they met in Visegrad the same the same the same vibe they they really wanted to be so official, but that's the male history of Central Europe, and I feel like we don't no. want to talk about it, you know, um, so we will not. <laughs> yeah, we will do some our own like uh, things from our history and from our presence to to share with you maybe and yeah because the because central europe i i think for now is that like the, it lacks the wealth and like you know the capitalistic point of view of west the, it lacks also orthodox church as the east so it's like it's everything that's like the Central Europe now is like is is uh, you can say that you can name it by the things that the Central Europe doesn't have. So we want to for sure it it lacks their own identity and uh, also specific you know, characteristics. So we want to change it, and we will talk about the topics as animals and I guess women or like queers mm -hmm. that. They don't have even a voice sometimes in Central Europe because of the political situation. And by being so privileged to do this here in New York, we can maybe, you know, explain or like change it in even this small community of, I guess, 30 people who came here interested in the subject. Thank mm -hmm. you for joining us. I don't see the glossier cashier I invited two weeks ago, but thank you that you came. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, it's like. I think it's somebody. Sorry. Somebody. Is somebody is looking to go yeah. inside. Yeah. Maybe that's the glossier, glossier cashier. I don't know who's glossier cashier. Yeah, I invite. <laughs> invite it. <laughs> okay. No, but no. I think that um, those countries and also the the Slavic, you know, the Slavic uh, word is based on the stories mostly. And I think that we, we, we should share some stories with you or some, some spells or some, some other narratives because I guess that it's really important for, uh, for our, or m maybe just, m just more myself, but <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's really important for our... Um, practice. Yeah, pra also practice, but also the, f the vibe of the countries, you know, the, oh, yeah, yeah, because the, 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 those narratives are some, something which connect us somehow and uh, yeah, sharing the stories and also some believing in, in the myths and yeah, those stuff. spoken stories are yeah. not in the history books and in history books you can see like urge to you know talk about knights and wars and just this patriarchal bullshit that it's not if we don't have so intense identity we don't need to make this our identity so yeah, yeah like those 
spoken stories can help build other mm -hmm. identification. Yeah, because for example, I don't know how it's in a Poland, uh, Slovakia and Hungary, but we have a really cool story in the Czech Republic, which is a myth. I don't know, uh, n like, nobody knows if it's really happened or not, <laughs> maybe not. But uh, it's it's like, um, it's a narrative uh, or it's a narrative like uh, when matriarchy society becomes into, like goes to patriarchy society. And it's a really cool myth, and I don't know if you like uh, stories, but <laughs> I should try to tell you some, uh, some of it. Because it's like uh, that there was a grandfather who's called Czech, and he came to, uh, to our lands and said, okay, there will be our, my lands or our lands. And he's got the three daughters. You know, uh, the first one was a witch, the second one was a doctor, and the third one was a leader. The youngest one was the leader. Called, uh, she, her name was Lebusha, and uh, she came and um, just ruled the world. Uh, no, not just the lands, not the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's got a really, really powerful um, group uh, all around her of uh, women warriors, and uh, that was something which men don't like that much, so she was forced to find her husband, so she found found a really cool guy called Przemysl, <laughs> and uh, after a few years she died. This Przemysl became a king, but just by him, uh, like, like without the women, you know. And uh, those women warriors didn't like it, and they started a war, and we called this period of the, those battles like uh, maiden wars, because it was really cool, you know. The, uh, they said that every man was afraid of his own woman, because they, you know, they were in a strike, they were in a fight, and they fight a lot. And we know a lot of stories, and we also have a lot of castles, which was made by those maidens, so it was huge. But at the end, they lose, they lost, yeah, and uh, that beca that how patriarchy system just come into our lands, and it's really funny. Uh, so yes, so that was the first story, I guess, the first. And then aspect. maybe we will show. No, no, no. You should continue if you have uh, maybe you have some other story or some other. Ah, then I, um, I think we can also show. No, 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 no. no later, maybe. Uh, later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Right. <laughs> yeah, just maybe talk about those political system well, or maybe some Catholic system. I you know, do believe that I actually made, uh, you know, I wanted to make uh, some works here when I got here about Polonia. It actually frightened me. It's very scary to be Polish. I mean, the, the Polish, Polish people here are very scary. So, um, yeah, this topic is very, I need to think about how to talk about the Polonia here uh, and those magazines, very radical magazines uh, that I uh, got in my hands. So uh, the, the things I, I did here, they are connected to finding roots of uh, Poland, which is not for sure, like we, we got Catholicism because we wanted to deal with, deal with the West with the amber. We wanted to sell amber and slaves in the 9th century. And it's like, it's common knowledge, everybody knows it. But then like after some centuries, it, it turned out that we are a very Catholic country, you know, 97 percent of people white and Catholic and since uh, two weeks we have this list of pregnant women that, go that government is doing which I ref refers to in this uh, work. I will tell more about it later with this beautiful frame that I found in trash in New York and uh, yeah it's like you know you cannot do art if you if two people in Poland will find it offensive for their Catholic faith then you are banned from making art or like you go to jail, for sure your like theater work will not be shown. It's, uh, so you know, like this lack of identity of this whole country is like screaming, please just <laughs> give us something because if not, we'll be fundamentalistic Catholics and it's very bad, you know, it's very bad, especially for women or like queer people for, oh no, for sure. The people with uterus, I think, the, the most, you know, they, they suffer the most. And uh, But I would li like mm -hmm. to talk about it on the example, so I think okay. we should start okay. the screening. Really, to, I would like to say more about then uh, Because, continue. you know, you, you start with the Catholic things. Yes. And on the other hand, in Czech Republic, we are a super pagans, you know, atheist country because <laughs> because uh, there is not like that. We will have we have a lot of uh, religious people uh, or some different uh, different churches. We just don't have them 
and it's it's something which I really love on the Czech Republic because <laughs> that's uh, that's the thing that we cannot be like uh, super conservative in some way um, of thinking. But uh, there's another story uh, because uh, at maybe sixth century or something like this, there was a Catholicism who came to our lands from mm -hmm. Rome, I guess, and. Um, the Catholics or the Romans people just kill all of the bears, uh, mm. and also in Poland and also in uh, you know uh, like every Slavic country in all, all of Europe because bear was the saint animal because um, pagans just believe that uh, the bear is uh, something like a different type of uh, man you know. Uh, because he can also uh, walk by two two legs, <laughs> you know, and he when he st stands, he just looks pretty similar to to, to man or to to human. Yeah. So they 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 killed. It was really um, how to say. There was a, like a really crusade uh, war against bears in our lands, and it's really it, yeah, yeah. And they just um, crucified them, you know. The bears. Oh, they did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my God. It was really, really no, but no, just, just, just kill them and make the statue of the of the of the dead body of the bears. No, no one's talk about it a lot, but we, uh, but bear is like something like a fallen king, you know, because we know that in animal world we have a like lion, he's a king, or, but we we also have a bear who is a fallen king because they kill him because he was something like a saint. So. It's uh, also something which is missing me, or which is missing in my uh, my view of uh, Czech or maybe Slavic history. Uh, those those animals and also some approach and also those myths which were actually uh, forgotten somehow. Yeah. So I want just uh, you know read yeah, yeah, on this uh, on this Catholic uh, things which is not. Like, yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. like the Slavic myths, we need to say it loud. I'm working with the Slavic myths. I'm calling them Slavic myths as a key to understanding what I'm doing, but it's not not such thing as Slavic mythology. It's not existing. Like the, those countries, even though they are maybe speaking this kind of similar languages, mm -hmm. I can understand Czech. Mm -hmm. I can understand Slovakian, but uh, mm -hmm. like those uh, people before Catholics or. Yeah, Catholics probably they they ruined everything. But like they they, they were in the small groups and they had beliefs. Like it, it still survived, and I will show also in my work that I did. It still survived through, through like in some villages, some small beliefs of like you know just the uh, you know like so, yeah 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 exactly. Can you say it again? Superstitious. Superstitious. Superstitions, yeah. yes, yes, exactly this word. So, but, but, uh, and Catholic, you know, even this like political work with the Catholic Church, who was always so always combined with the rulers, uh, they, you know, they try to like convince people that Catholic Church is not so, it's not so different than their beliefs. But uh, we lost uh, many things through aristocracy, who just, you know, could, could do with the land whatever they want, and they like we had some scripts that they found like a saint, uh, you know, like a mountain of some, um, I don't know, the god or like uh, some s saint and then they were just like, well, I want to, uh, you know, grow potatoes here. I don't want it. Just destroy it. It's my land. Like that's, that's why actually uh, Poland was like under 200 years of occupation because the aristocracy was more, much more powerful than the monarchy as just different than the, like in the West, but like the history, I, I, I really wanted to like, you know, for me, I love history. I could speak about it a lot, but it, what, what, like, I think this is the time that we need to focus on the, the things that like, uh, mm, the results of those changes. So like with mm -hmm. this, what we need to deal now. So mm -hmm. you want to start with yes, those talks? Yes, yes, I think we can. Okay, cool. So may I start or you? Yeah, yeah, I think okay. yes. So now we will turn the lights off. Uh, we will show you some works, uh, probably video and like online. And then we will talk if, if, if it would be needed about works that we did here. Okay. So maybe I will start uh, just briefly with my, uh, because I'm a, <laughs> it will be loads a little bit. But, um, 
I'm more like video artist and filmmaker, and in my uh, free time, uh, when I'm watch, uh, watching Hercule Poirot, I, I'm, I'm doing those drawings. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I would love to present you my, one of my uh, video, but maybe it's impossible <laughs> to deal with. But, uh, yeah. I don't know what's happening there, but uh, this video uh, is somehow connected with those myths uh, of Maiden Wars, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's here. So, I, because you know, it's unbelievable that in Czech Republic with such a super uh, strong narrative, no, but nobody just do um, a film about, about uh, Maiden Warriors. There were some, but not a good one, I guess, so uh, I create a uh, 10 minutes video about about the process of um, you know this women uh, women fights, so uh, <laughs> it's a little bit uh, funny I guess because uh, it starts like uh, in like like uh, like with the women around the fire who was really beaten and really sad, and those women just uh, just cry and in one moment they starting to uh, to pray and uh, suddenly then there's some kind of magician or some creature just appeared and give them a um, magical, magical thing, some, some kind of ma magic uh, artifact, which is actually tail, and, this, and say to them, hey, girls, just use this and you will become an, somehow an animal. You will be shy, you will be strong, you, you could fight, you know, as an animal. So those girls just use it and to go go uh, to war and beat the man, and, you know, it's really, it's really... A, blood everywhere and they are happy because they fought they fight at the, at they won uh, but at the end of the video you uh, you will see that those uh, tales are not just a tale this is also an albats you know and those girls just use the know, chakra and um, <laughs> so uh, yeah it's uh, it's like this so uh, I'm doing a video with uh, with the animation and also with um, uh, with real actors and actresses, and um, I'm also using. Oh, do you want more wine? Sorry. Do want yeah, more? I need more wine. Thank you. Uh, and I'm also doing some some music projects. Uh, this one, which I would love to show you, is without subtitles. So sorry for that. But it's uh, it's uh, I, I do it with Valentina Janu, who is my really good friend, and we just want to exp uh, we just want to do some song uh, for uh, for women and uh, somehow uh, empower them so so it's uh, just you know that we use some english words so you, you might understand something but it's a might uh, but it's uh, f 4 minutes long i guess but it's a rap so maybe you will enjoy that <laughs> uh.
Netflix, so it will be like in 2025 on, uh, on platform, so <laughs> uh, it takes uh, quite a lot of time, but um, also I would love to say something about the painting, uh, about the drawings you see, because uh, it's, my, uh, <laughs> it's my relaxation, and I'm not going to therapy, I'm going to witch, <laughs> uh, and my witch told me that it's, uh, like, uh, it's, uh, it's the thing that all of us have some, have some power, and she tells me that I have a power of visual spells. I have no idea how, but uh, it's really uh, it's really funny uh, for me to to do that. So I uh, create the, the those huge drawings. It's uh, silk prints and uh, it's recipes, you know, because I think that receipts for food is also some kind of spells, you know, because uh, in the kitchen there's uh, it's a place where I think that some kind of magic is made. Uh, so th those are really my favorite recipes for uh, broths, uh, four of them actually, and I love the most the, the one with the huge carrot, uh, like, a, like a moon or something, because uh, there are birches in it. And I don't know if you know those trees, uh, but in, in the spring you could just m make a hole into the, spring, uh, into the birches and you get the water. And if you take a lot of the water, and make a broth from this water and put those things which are uh, create uh, like uh, draw there like uh, potato carrots and I don't know onion and stuff. Uh, you will have a broth which heals like like almost everything. So <laughs> so uh, the the paintings uh, the, the painting, sorry the drawings uh, are like a recipe. So uh, it's like that. And <laughs> if you want to you know explanation of the the others I could give you more receipts because I think it's uh, really important that the food is for our body yeah. mm. and then I'm also drawing something which is abstract but uh, which is not like concrete it's which but not also abstract because it has got this shape but I use the women body holes you know and also some vaginas and stuff but also use uh, in my drawings and thing uh, and animation um, red eyes because I think the, the red eyes are really connect us with the with the virtual space and also fingers you know so uh, so it's our ports into virtuality and it suffer a lot so because you know when you watch the screens often your eyes 
<laughs> are devastated or will be destroyed as soon as uh, like soon. For example, my eyes are really bad right now. So yeah, I'm, I think I'm over. I should just take a word <laughs> and continue maybe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I do. I do understand why. Okay, I'll put the light. Yeah. Sorry. I'll just. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I want to show you yeah, this, this video, but I understand why we have this talk together, you know, we are from the Central Europe <laughs> <laughs> and then we for sure our countries like very, just we don't learn, maybe that's the thing that not everybody knows, that we don't learn about our history in school, you know, we learn about like Greek mythology and you know, Romanian Empire, blah, 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 but like the Slavic mythology, even though it's probably the bad name, we don't learn about our roots. We learn, for example, my country is existing since we took the, you know, Catholic, like the baptism of the Catholic Church to, to sell slaves in amber. So, like, my practice is ba basically, like, not saying nothing, saying nothing about Catholic Church, because, you know, then if I will, if I will hurt Catholic Church in, in Poland, then I will go to jail. It's very, it's, it's a law. And like two pers two people can feel offended, and they don't even. Uh, oh, I told this already. Yeah, they don't even uh, need to see the uh, see the work. So like with this, uh, for sure with the Slavic mythology, it's very. Like I really like to, I really like to uh, tell people that I read about it a lot. I I did, but it's not a lot actually. Like you cannot find a lot of things. Uh, usually there's like a fake myths of 19th century that people like me just thought oh it would be so nice to have some slavic mythology let's make it you know <laughs> some people tell me yeah let's let's put it in the book so i also do it you know uh especially like focusing of uh, with the with the woman or like non-binary person that the persons that i i know in my real life and you know they as you can see they are resting they are not fighting they really like they're like animal they 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 build buildings just for you know just for like feeling of beauty that it brings they because they sleep outside or or no they're growing their weapon on trees um yeah and this this is one of the like this is the series of the binary goddess of procrastination so also i put like you know just those things that are happening now in those static myths because I feel like we lack a lot of legends of, of uh, not male body, you know, like even with the period we don't have nothing about it to ex like explain it now as that it's normal or it's happening, like it just, but this for example is from, as, as I wanted to say, it's from the, like some, some girl in my age told me uh, this in Warsaw that in, their, in, in her village it's still like she, when she where she grew up. It was this. It was true that you cannot shout at the swamp because the light uh, buds, you know, like those shiny ones, will explode if you will. So that's the that I, I put this in the myths as a quiet welcome of some fairies and uh, yeah, it's existing like because I feel like there's no difference between like what the girl who told me like, you know, 500 years ago or now. It's just, if it survived, it's then it's a very strong myth or like maybe it's true, you know? Um, and then, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of myths, but a lot, maybe this is uh, also a quite nice example of how um, that, that, that's that neo-paganism is, uh, is uh, visible in Poland. That's like, but it's still it's the it's the mm, myth of the families with the curly hair. If you have the curly hair, you are probably the daughter or like granddaughter, right, of the like the young goddesses with the curly hair. And then you need to be young to have the power of this young goddess because it's young and with the curly hair. And uh, in my last day of my youth, that happened like quite a year ago. I had to cut them, the hair, and to make them like to preserve them in the earrings, because if not, I would they would lose their power. And now I can use them as the artifact of the magical power of those young 
goddess from the Slavic mythology. And uh, I guess my, you know, my strategy is not to tell if it's true or not, because it, I don't think it does not, it, it's not, it doesn't matter. And uh, just to bring you know, other beliefs to Poland, not the Catholic Church. And then uh, I will probably, you know, if, since I'm here in the US, I did those things, so can those canvases. I would really like to talk about it more because from what I see, it's, it's different, you know, to speak about Central Europe and Poland in Europe, and it's different here when, the, like, I felt that those Slavic myths are, like, kind of uh, working with the stereotypes of Polish people, of, the, of, the, of my of my normality, but here it's like just not uh, so, you know, uh, understandable. It's like you grew up or like the people here are like in, in other conditions. So like, it's not so easy to get those little metaphors, you know, metaphors. Uh, so I will show you one video that's, it's probably, the, it will be more easy to understand the paintings I did here. Uh, and it's called, uh, it's called Hello Daisy. Um, it's the reason I, I am here. I won with this the first prize in some competition, and they sent me here. So that's the yeah, that's the video. It's yeah. Oh no, it's about the idiom that you cannot uh, even touch a girl with the flower, and it means that the girl in Poland is so fragile that you can probably also in in some other countries close to this country is the same. So I'm as I as you can see, I'm not so looking as a woman, so I do believe like I'm also working with the girlhood somehow. It's different for some people, so yeah, I'm dealing with this idiom here. <laughs> seconds more and as you can tell the, the idiom like the stereotype is very strong uh, <laughs> you, you, you know womanhood is a is a big thing I also am a rapper a little in Poland is like a, my uh, like part of my uh, part of my work that I wanted to just put in the exhibition that I mock everything up and it was like when one of the last martyrs in the 21st century. But then I released some songs, and I am actually quite like concerting there, <laughs> doing concerts, sorry. So um, um, I could show you like the, also like a short example of Queen of Amber song, because then it's like, it's all, all here in those paintings that I hear. And if I'll show you maybe even a short example of this video, you will understand more why I chose those things to do here that I did. And then we can almost end this artist talk <laughs> since it's been yeah, quite, quite, quite long. It's called Queen of Amber and I work with Poznan uh, people, my friends. I am using a very nationalistic fun fundamental Catholic church language, very strong, very like what they do, what they say when they say bring, make Poland good great again, like in different Catholic way. And I think they don't need to have, they, they cannot have the monopoly for those words, you know. I'm, I'm a queen of armor. Um, and then there's a worker, her work. 
also like a polish globe but for silver, you know? It was the salt. And you know it, it it I wanted to make it like kind of like political movie that, that you maybe suspect that they want to you know kill the queen. But it's just a video, you know, it's just a movie, like a video clip, so they actually will party. So that was that will be this. Mm, as you can see then there is like parties. And this is the amber as like raisins. just a video clip but uh, I don't want to uh, I feel like you know there's artist talk I don't know that's my also like one of my first artist talks in, in, my, in my life I don't know what to do with the artist talks but since we have some works I do believe that they work I came up here because uh, you know the works I had was not enough in this country for example like they, they were like for made for a different audience so I guess then we can turn lights up mm -hmm. And uh, just invite you for the exhibition, you know, because uh, the thing is, uh, yeah. since, uh, since we as a Central Europe have not so much in common as you could see, you know, with different faiths or like different, like, I think the, uh, the biggest thing that combined the Central Europe is just the dislocation in the map, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and like, like no, not being on the true. West, like kind of left with the communism, you know, with the something, something. And then like just, uh, you know, wanting to be part of the European Union, which mm -hmm. we achieved. So, you know, it's, it's not so intense. No, I guess the, bonding, there are you know? some really eco, like similar narratives in it, uh, in our like le uh, lens and uh, type of thinking. And uh, I see some, you know, roughness and also strength and also toughness, you know, and some, and also mm, position of woman or, or something. You yeah, know, I guess really the position simple. of woman, yeah. you know, it's very intense. Like it's it's uh, it's very shocking that it's, but like it's very shocking also for me for, for like the, the the Czech women are like I thought that this is a Catholic church, you know. I'm very sad that it's not. Well. <laughs> You know that the Catholic Church make makes you like woman. Woman in Poland is like uh, you know, uh, or self-sacrificing mother or femme fatale, which is West, which is like you know different. It's not Polish anymore. Like when you do become independent woman, then are you even you know Polish? Are you? Are you? you I think they, they. It's like still post-communistic way of thinking that they, that you probably you know are with them, not with your country. So. Um, yes, uh, I guess I would uh, I like to start with the paintings I did here. It's it's you know I wanted to do, do some Slavic myths as I feel I feel comfortable with this subject and it's very understandable understandable yeah. But like some things happens here. I also interviewed the Polonia here Polonia people and I decided to go with the images of Polish women. Um, here and like in Poland, so it's from the right to left, it's those three paintings. And on the right one, you can see uh, a Hussar lady. Hussar is like a great knight from 18th century where Poland was falling apart. They were creating this myth of great, you know, ancient uh, knight uh, with the wings, as you can see, and he like we lacked uh, land and like identity, but like it was the myth that we are still strong because we had this ancestors uh, called hussars. So like this is my grandmother uh, doing the domestic work here in po in in US in the 80s, 
as uh, you know, as an ITS, I would say just I wanted to also like show that this is not a shameful thing because I interviewed a lot of people here from Poland and they all were like, don't record me, please. I don't want to say about it. Yeah, that's not me, you know, I'm just since some months I'm doing this or like I couldn't I had like a bachelor but here they didn't accept it so like I yes I was doing this but like it's very like, like they are very ashamed of this so I wanted to you know make it more powerful I don't know it's not a shame to clean the vases of rich people but uh, my grandmother if, when she saw it she said that she is not accepting this <laughs> image of her that I have to tell that this is my aunt, which worked like this whole, whole life. Mm, well, I am telling, this is my aunt, you know, this is not my grandmother. <laughs> and oh, I didn't say about the symbol you have here, like on the, on the breasts, I put it, actually you cannot see my other works, but if you will see at them, in probably one of like 90% of paintings, you have this symbol with the eight, um, kind of like a star or like a flower. It's from the Slavic mythology. It's used by nationalists too, but a different way, it looks different than more like sharp way and I made it a flower. And it's my secret association of women or even the girls. I'm putting this everywhere. And you know, if you buy my painting, you may don't know about it, but then you have it in your house and then you're like spreading the word of this special as association. Um, and then the past is Slavic myth. It's the smallest painting I did. I want to show, I, um, I mean, it's sad that the guy is not here, but it was about the uh, case that happened to me here in New York. One guy asked me if he can kiss me. I said no. And then he kissed me on like two, two meetings after uh, without my consent. Uh, so I painted this as a Slavic myth. So like in Slavic mythology, we have this uh, myth about the goddess, daisy goddess, you, you can see the flower on her head, who is teaching the dogs that dog that don't, no means no. And it's just like a classic myth that we have in Poland of this, that you know, that even dog like understand the boundaries of the other goddesses because it's okay to understand and like, you know, to not cross them, it's very important. And it's the smallest canvas because I really felt that, you know, and it's very, uh, that's my river. I, I feel better now. <laughs> you know. Also, you go to which I, I put paintings very small and down when I really don't like the subject. And it's you know it's in the Slavic mythology. Probably somebody wrote. Probably it was somewhere. You know, like maybe we lost it through times. I do believe. You know, I think I read about it somewhere, some time. And then uh, you have uh, presence, which is this painting in the middle. It's a very sad, very sad face. The vase is, you know, evolving. And like, this is what, where we are now. Me and my friends and me are my, you know, just people in Poland. You know, like since 2015, we have this Catholic church government and it's getting worse and worse. But it was like, yeah, you know, whatever. We can go to West or like we can go to New York. We can get abortion illegally every, you know, whatever. Because after pill is also illegal. Like you need to get a prescription. But then like doctors can say to you that he believes in Catholic church. So he will not help you to kill the child. And then you cannot, you don't need to get it. You, you have to kind of beg or like, you know, you know, it just have a laugh or something. So this is uh, one of the girls, very, very sad, just surrounded by the flowers, you know, in this beautiful garden of Adam and Eve, I assume. And those are the, the other woman in Poland, kind of like uh, commented by our, not president, but the ruler of the party, that he's, he explained like few, even like, I don't know, a week ago, he explained that like the birth you know, like woman in Poland does not have babies, d don't have babies because they drinking too much and they did do drugs. So that's the problem, not the like a traumatic, you know, a list of pregnant women <laughs> that is going on since some weeks. Uh, this is like a kind of like, I do believe it looks kind of like a Virgin Mary, but it's just a bald girl with the hoodie. You just, you know, just to try to not speak about those the weird images that they are, I don't know why, so important for many people there. And uh, just in and, and that's why they are so monstrous, you know, they have like one 
hands, they are kind of angry, you know, we are very angry, <laughs> we are very frustrated, and, uh, you know, like, they have two heads. I, I do believe they, that's how the government sees, the, like, perceived woman in Poland. And there, just in between, you have the list that I am proposing to control uh, for people that you can actually control in your life. I do believe it's like uh, amount of sugar in your hot beverage you can control, you know, you can, uh, uh, are you a dog or a cat person, you can choose, you know, you can, that, that's the thing, you can actually, I think, think about it and put it on a list. I think, I just propose it, I will probably send it to my government too, you know, in the big envelope. I do hope they will read it, I don't think they will read it. Um, but I think that's the better way to control your life, not the pregnant woman in your country. Um, yeah, and that's the future. It may look very medieval age, you know, it may look very like ancient, ancient kind of like Slavic myths uh, vibe. Well, I do believe we are going there <laughs> with <coughs> what is happening. But as you can see, those, uh, this, wo this woman is maybe pointing with their, her source, source, no? this is sword. sword, yeah, thank you, sword, with the sword at the flowers or at this person. Uh, we don't know, you know, we don't know. Um, but then you can see those flowers. It's actually, I, I made this painting in 2019. It's just the back painting. Well, they are cut. Anyway, you know, I, d I don't, I feel everything, <laughs> what I did, it. I love those like big, you know, stories that I create and like history creates and then you can put some random facts or random paintings and create big story about them there. If my government does that, I also like to do it and it works, you know, it works. You can see that it's just the, the, the same flowers they are, you know, and they're cut here. What does it mean? I don't know. <laughs> and then uh, later is a sculpture of a pierogi, which is from the interviews. I was, well, maybe you cannot see it now, but I was asking people, of, like, you know, just without the politics, what is the most Polish thing in the world, like from at the green point, or like many ways, many, many, like not even Polish people, okay? Like many people I was asking. Besides of vodka, they said pierogi a lot of times. And I feel like, okay, I can take it, you know, like, let's just not pretend that we have something else because we actually don't, like, that's, that's the thing that with the Central Europe, we didn't have super nice inventions, you know, we, we, we didn't, like, it was okay, you know, it was, I think it's very important in Central Europe to be normal, you know, and we don't know the, what the normality is yet, so we really seize it, we seek it, you know, and we really want to be normal, just casual, you know, West is too much, is this, too little or something, and then we just re really like to be in the middle. So I guess uh, I sculpt the pierogi uh, in ceramic, and Lisa, who is she's staying there, I thank you, thank you. I did like she she baked it for me. It's very like I, I really sculpt. I, I didn't sculpt it. They they made it as pierogi, normal to eat, but it's a little bigger. It's made with from the ceramic and it's filled with amber. So it's yet again, I do believe it's also like kind of like a archetype of domestic workers that we are kind of here from what I heard, but they don't want to talk about it, but I do assume it's kind of this thing. And then, you know, also women are just doing this work, uh, homework, you know, as to make the food. And I do believe maybe it is the most Polish thing in the world, you know, this, this Russian pierogi, because it's actually in Polish, it, it, it's the name of the pure dumplings with the cottage cheese, with the cheese and the tomato, potatoes, it's called Russian pierogi. So it's very amazing that it's not even, I mean, I mean we switched this now to Ukrainian pierogi, but it's still not Polish pierogi, it's very, I, I find it very interesting. It's, it's actually a misunderstanding and misconception. It's not called Russian pierogi, it's called pierogi ruskie and not rosinskie because it's come, it comes from a region that uh, belonged to Poland back in the time and now is a, a, a is a part of Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and so, so it, it's actually Ruteni Pierogi and not Russian. Cool. But we call the Ruskia, like, Ruskia, Rus Ruskia it means like Russian in the very like not nice way, you no, know? No, it, it refers to Rutenia. It, it, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it uh, refers 
refers to what uh, Galicia was, what uh, Lviv and um, and Ivano Frankivsk uh, were under Polish rule. It, it's a big misconception, and it shouldn't be uh, banned and called and, and returned into Pierogruchaiskie because it doesn't make any sense. The name it already refers to Ukraine, to a part of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that was actually yeah. also like that, that was a colony of Poland. Because it's much older than the Russian state. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you know, the Ru Ruskia, it's also like this very like it's not Russians. It's it's also like when they say now Rus, uh, like they don't say Russians anymore in Poland. I don't know if you heard yeah, hear the, the radio. Same way of the <laughs> From Shemkevich's opening in Yeshiva. Well, Shemkevich was a very myth, good myth maker too. I do assume you know like, that that's not true what he he wrote in his books, you know. Okay, okay. Still, okay. Thank you for this uh, for this thing. Uh, that they now called Ukrainian pierogies, and still, it's a very I, well. I from what I uh, I accept the fact that uh, the post Polish thing is not is like from the land that we occupied, and like you know, like the aristocracy of Poland claimed their land and. Do you want to say something more? I feel like you are very, like, very angry at me. Can you, can, do you want to say it? No. Or you are so Okay. 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 So, yes, those are the pierogi with amber because we, our history started with, like, you know, dealing with amber <coughs> with other countries in the 19th. That's why we took Christianity. So. That's my story for uh, US, and uh, it will be shown it at Keysmith Gallery on the 3rd December, and it will be a solo show that will last for a month. I am highly inviting you. It will be a little more than I show today, and uh, glad that you came here for the talk. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>